Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna go all over the one switch looper in the HX Stomp. We're gonna go over how to use it, different configurations, what I think is the best way to set it up, especially considering that you only have about three buttons that you can use with the HX Stomp. I will show you ways to expand that, different gear you might look into in order to expand your options, and some of the more advanced settings and what I think could be the best settings for this looper, since it is somewhat limited, but it's still pretty useful. So before we get started, I post videos like this all the time, stuff on HX Stomp, Helix, gear reviews, wireless in-ear monitors, finding cheap stuff on Amazon for musicians. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell. All right, let's get started. So to access the looper, you push this button right here in your chain, scroll down all the way to the bottom, you have looper. You can choose if you want mono or stereo. I usually do mono just because I'm just using one output, but if you are using stereo, go ahead and use stereo. You do have this option between one switch looper and the shuffling looper. I don't know, honestly, what the shuffling looper does. Maybe I'll do a video about that in the future, but we're just sticking with the one switch looper. So that is that block right there. So now that it's enabled, it's a little bit tougher to assign the best way to do it in your different modes right here. So you have stomp mode, preset, this mode, and then the snapshot mode. So it's probably best to use in stomp mode. So in order to assign that to one of these buttons right here, you want to select the button that you want to assign, in this case, the looper, push these two buttons right here and hit bypass assign. Now, where do you want to assign that? Do you want it to assign to foot switch one, two, or three? So I'm gonna assign that to foot switch one. You can also try and assign it up to one, two, three, four, five. I did do an in-depth guide of all the different ways to assign the parameters in your HX stomp if you are interested in watching that. But now it's assigned to foot switch one. So the way that this works is you push once, it turns red and it's recording. Push it again, it turns green and it's playing. Touch it one more time and it's an orange, which means you're overdubbing over it. So then you're, after you record, you'll switch between green, which is playing, orange, which is overdubbing. And if you want to stop it, you double tap it really fast. If you want to clear it, you double tap it and hold it, and then it clears. Were you able to see the colors on that on the screen? Red recording, green is playing, orange is overdubbing, green is playing again. To, to stop, double tap fast. To clear, double tap and hold, and it clears it out. Cameras are so tough to get these LED rings because it always just blinks like that. It drives me crazy. So I'll just lay down a loop really quick. Most exciting loop ever. So now it's green, so it's plain. I hit orange, it goes to overdub mode, so I can lay something down over it. My timing's off because I wasn't listening, but now if I'm done overdubbing, I can hit play, and I can like solo over it. You know, or whatever. It's not the best looping example right there. Double tap it to stop it. Push it again to bring it back in. Double tap to hold and clear. So now if I want to record again, I can start recording. Pretty basic, um, but what I discovered is that it's a little bit limiting to do that. One of the things that I like to do is I like to assign different buttons for these two right here. So the way that you get more control out of your looper is you push these two buttons again, and then you go to the command center right here. I did a whole video on the HX Stop command center if you're interested in finding out more about it. There'll be a link in the description or up above. But basically you have these three buttons right here. You get control over what you want to assign foot switch one, foot switch two, and foot switch, foot switch three two. So I'm at the very end, so foot switch one, I'm gonna sign it, go to the very end, so you have all these different things you can do, MIDI CC, CC toggle, all this stuff. Again, I went into more depth about it, but the very last one is looper. So you get this behavior right here. Do you want press and release triggers it or press and hold? So you have to hold it for it to work. I bet most of the time you just, you just wanna press it and we'll do the action that you want it to do. So you have all these options. You can set it to none, you can set it to just play, just stop, play or stop, record, overdub, record slash overdub, play once, reverse, forward, forward slash reverse, half speed, full speed, toggle between half speed and full speed, and undo. So let's say I wanna put this one as just play. If you look out here, now it's just playing. Obviously there's nothing to play because I haven't recorded anything. So I'm actually gonna assign that to record. So now this button is just record. But now you don't have any more buttons you can press. 
You know, it, it's just record. That's literally all that it does. So it's kind of almost useless to sign it to one of those. So what I have it assigned to actually is record slash overdub. And I'll show you why here in a minute. And then on foot switch two, which I'm going to sign right there, I'm going to sign that to play and stop. So now I have record slash overdub is right here. Play and stop is right here. This is the way that I like to do it. You can assign it. And if you like just having the one button and then having two other buttons right here or having, you know, four more buttons, which I'm going to get to here in a little bit. But this was the way that I like to have it set up. And then foot switch three, I actually have that assigned to undo, which is really nice to have an undo feature because I don't believe you have an undo feature with just regular mode. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I couldn't figure out how to do undo with just like the one button. So now I have record overdub, stop, play, and then undo. So we'll do my super exciting recording again. I'm trying to use my hand to do this because it's not on the floor. So play, and then I can stop it here or I can hit play again. And you can say dub out, you can see that. So none of that's recording. Now when I push the button, it's dub in. So it's listening for me to record something. Ah, whatever. <laughs> I was talking so I couldn't hear the timing. So don't judge me about my horrible timing. Um, and now I'm dubbed out and now I can do whatever I want over the top of it, right? Stop and play, stop and play. Say that other one sucked, undo. Thank God, because it, it did not sound good. So now I have an undo feature and then I can redo it again. There you go, now the timing's right. Make sense? And then stop and then the way you clear it is hold, press and hold. And it's gone. Or actually, all you have to do is just hit record again, because while it stopped, this is your play control. So if I recorded something, doesn't matter what it is. And then I stop it and then I hit record again. That starts a new recording. So either hit record to start something new or hit play to redo what I just re what I just recorded. Make sense? So having that undo feature is really nice. So that's just that's just the way that I decided to set up my looper. And I usually do live looping and I use my HX stomp a lot. And if I use a Quanta Looper app, I did a whole video on that. It's probably one of the best loopers I've ever used. Check out that video if you're interested in seeing more about it. But in, you know, it's on an iPad. So in case if my iPad craps out on me, I still have an option on how to do one button looping if I need it, which is nice. A couple of things just to know, if you're gonna assign this third one right here, you have to go into your global settings right here, foot switches, and you have to set stomp three. Most of the time it's set to tap slash tuner, um, but you have to assign that to stomp three. I did go, I did also do a video of all the global settings, your HX stomp. I'm just promoting all my videos, I guess, but uh, I do have a video explaining all of the global settings as well, if you're interested in checking that out. So that's the way that I set it up. And now just a couple of things to think about. It's kind of weird that they give you this option. You can either do half speed or full speed, but what's weird about that let me set up a, a loop that doesn't suck. And it's not interesting. But then you push half speed. And it's half speed now. But you have no way to get out of half speed. It's basically half speed or not half speed. So I would never assign... Let me go back to foot switch three. And assign it to toggle speed. Because now you have switch between full speed and half speed. So if you ever wanted to do that, or the reverse forward, it's the same thing. Whoops. Oh no, I assigned the wrong one. So reverse forward, if I sign it to just reverse, I just get reverse and I have no way to set it back to forward. So it's pretty much pointless to use that. I would use the reverse slash forward so you can switch between the two. Makes sense if you plan to use it that way. There's something else you might have noticed in the command center up here. You do have foot switch four and foot switch five as options. So you plug in it, you know, in the expression input right here. And I'm using this. This is the Mission Engineering TT2. I'll post a link down below. I love this thing. It's so compact, so easy to use, and it gives me two extra buttons. But say I want foot switch four to be that forward and reverse. 
and then foot switch five, I want to be that toggle between the speeds. So now I have record overdub, play and stop, undo. This is my reverse and forward, and this is full speed and half speed. So now as this is playing, I can reverse it and then set it to normal speed. And then this one, oh, is that not a sign? Oh, I know why. I was like, I don't know why that's happening. So the reason why is again, you have to go to your global settings and make sure that your foot switches are set to, so foot switch three has to be sent to stop three, foot switch four has to be sent to stop four, and foot switch five, when I normally use this, this is my tap tempo and tuner, so I need to set that to stomp five. Now it'll work. So now I hit play, reverse, forward, speed, which speed is also that pitch, which I wish it didn't do that, but it's, an... and there you go. Make sense? So that's just kind of more ways to get more options out of your looper. It's, you know, you only get one loop, but it's still worth it to have something in your HX stomp. So just something to keep in mind also is just think about where your looper is going to be. So since it's right here, everything before it gets recorded into the looper. So if I turn, so the distortion is on before it. So now if, so if I'm going to record something over that, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect the loop in general. However, if I move that after the looper, hear how everything's distorted? But beforehand, I record something distorted and it goes into the looper. And then everything, the effects after it hit my reverb because I want a little bit of reverb on everything, but I don't want to record reverb going in. So just make sure you're thinking about the order of your path before you start recording. So just something to keep in mind. So I do recommend this Mission Engineering TT2. It's a great little device to just get two extra buttons out of your HX stomp. You plug in here in the top with a TRS cable, and then you get two extra buttons in here. Lights are back up. So this thing, this thing's awesome. I, I, I love having it. It's one of the best things I've added to my HX stomp. You can get more controls out of it with MIDI. You have a MIDI port here in the side that you can plug in a MIDI controller and get more use out of your HX stomp. So again, I did another video about all about programming your HX stomp and your Helix using MIDI. Check that out if you're unfamiliar with MIDI. I also did a master video of what MIDI programming is and explaining all the terms and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and watch that. But you can see you have MIDI commands in the manual. You have 60 through 66. So, you know, MIDI CC 60 is record slash overdub. 61 is play and stop, record once, so on and so forth. But you have six different controls in here. So if you get a certain MIDI controller, specifically the one that I've seen that's really cool, I've never used it, but it looks really cool, is the MC6 by Morningstar. This one has six different assignable buttons that you can do, and you can plug it in with your HX stomp, and you can sign each of those buttons to do each of those controls. So for example, A could be your record overdub. B can be your play and then stop. C can be your undo and redo. And then you have three more controls up there, which again, you can even you can even assign to different pedals or something in your in your HX stomp. It's a really cool way to get more options out of your HX stomp. So I'll post links to both of those down below. That can be really valuable to have just that as your looper or something like that. Since you know, you are limited with the number of blocks that you get with the HX stomp. Although if you do find yourself needing more, there is always the HX stomp XL, which is something that I've considered getting for a while now. And there's also, of course, the full Helix or the Helix LT. So you can always keep that in mind. But hopefully this helped you guys out and you see more options of how you can do looping with your HX stomp. If you made it to the end of the video, just do me a favor and just hit the like button. It does a lot to help out to please the YouTube algorithm gods and suggest my channel and video to more people. So I'd really appreciate it. Links will be in the description down below to purchase any of the items that I was talking about. They are Amazon affiliate links. So it is a free way to help out the channel if you do decide to buy any of those items using my links down there. It doesn't cost you anything and it just helps out my channel a little bit. So I'd appreciate it. Don't forget to check out all the videos that I mentioned throughout this video. This is basically me explaining the looper and me shamelessly promoting my other videos. Links will be in the description down below to check out all those videos as well. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do post videos about Helix HX stomp tips like that all the time. Check out some of the other videos by clicking the links on your screen right now. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.